Hello everyone, what's up? It's me again, Junkmaster3. And uh, what do you know, it's that time of the year again when I count up all of the uh, top 10 of the month, eh, top 10 of the month, but the top 10 best movies that I've watched during the entire year of 2022. And uh, I'm going to mention some honorable mentions. The first five films are just honorable mentions, so they are pretty much sort of like a top 15, to be honest. But uh, I'm going to focus on the 10 other films. And just a heads up, when you, I make these videos like the top 10 best and top 10 worst, I will probably repeat myself over and over again because so many of these films are either really, really good at what they are and some of them are just really, really bad what what they are. So, uh, yeah, yes, it's just a little heads up there. So, yeah. So let's start with the honorable mentions. I'm just going to go through these quite quick so I can get to the top 10 lists. But if you want to know any more information about these films that I'm going to talk about today, uh, you can just look into my IMDb page and you'll find that particular list. Or I'll just leave a link down below in the description or something. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. So yeah, anyway, uh, first honorable mention, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil from 2010. Uh, entertaining, really entertaining horror comedy. Uh, the Mew, 2018. Uh, My Big Trouble in Little China, 1986, Sabata from 1969, and uh, the last honorable mention is Dirty Harry from 1971. Uh, sort of ashamed of myself that I had not seen that uh, previously, so yeah. So now we get to the top 10 list. First up, we have, at number 10, we have Yes Man from 2008, and uh, this has to be uh, my favorite uh, Jim Carrey comedy right now. I've seen a quite a few of his comedies and I think this is definitely one of the best ones, if not the very best one. I have yet to see uh, Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. That's a film that I have been trying to get a hold of as well. I have not seen that, but I've heard some really good things about it. Uh, apparently it's more of a drama, sort of like a drama thriller type thing, or at least what I remember, or at least what I've heard. So, uh, But anyway, Yes Man, it's basically about this guy played by Jim Carrey who has to say yes to absolutely everything. Uh, even those things that he just don't want to say yes to because he needs to improve his uh, his behavior, so to say. Uh, really hilarious and really funny, great acting and a really funny concept as well. So yeah, Yes Man at number 10. At number 9 we have a film called... This has actually two different titles. I'm not sure which... I think it depends on which country you're from or where, where it's known as, but... Uh, Oh my god, it has so many different type of names. Let's see. I'm just going to double check on this. Uh, yeah, that's the other title. Uh, in the next one at number 9 we have uh, No Escape, also known as Escape from Absalom from 1994. And this is a film that I picked, not picked up, but this is a film that I watched, I think it was right after the passing of uh, Ray Liotta, because he plays the lead role in this. And this one has some really good uh, supporting actors in it as well. Lance Henriksen and uh, Kevin Dillon and... Uh, oh, what's his name? Let's see. What is his name? The other guy. Oh, God. Ernie Hudson, of course. Just completely blacked out with his name there right there. So, uh, But anyway, No Escape or Escape from Absalom is sort of like this post-apocalyptic thing where, um, where uh, Ray Liotta gets sort of like banished into this... Uh, wild uh, area, I mean, like a, an island basically, and there's two different types of camps right there. So it's like a, one like a barbarian tribe or whatever, and then there's another tribe who wants to live more in harmony and peace. And that particular tribe is led by Lance Henriksen. Uh, so uh, yeah, really entertaining film, really filled with action and drama. And I mean, this movie really has everything. It, ha it is so somewhat cheesy to a certain degree, but I really enjoy it nonetheless. So yeah. No, no Escape, also known as Escape from Absalom. Uh, at number eight, we have a film called Raw Courage from 1984. And uh, the best way to describe this is uh, if you imagine Deliverance, but you have that in uh, like in the middle of nowhere, like in like a really like desolate area. It sort of like looks like it's somewhere in New Mexico or something. Uh, so if you have Deliverance put in that particular uh, area, you get this film, basically. So... Uh, and funny enough, this film was, I think, written, produced by Ronnie Cox, who also star in it. Uh, he's the main uh, character in it, and uh, he and his two buddies are going to go on a like, really long, uh, really long uh, run, really, uh, through the desert. And uh, so they're going to meet up with their families in the nearby village, like a nearby far away village in the end. So, uh, and of course, they get attacked by these. Uh, hooligans in the middle of nowhere and they're up to really no good and it's basically a 
fight for survival out in the middle of nowhere so no one can really hear them scream if they need help so really interesting premise and really great acting and uh yeah if you haven't seen this film uh, go check it out this is highly recommended so if you like deliverance you'll probably like this one as well then let's see here <coughs> sorry um the next one at number seven is bonnie and clyde from 1967 this has been, I think this has been uh, made into movies like numerous of times before. I'm not really sure how many versions there are, but this one I really appreciated um, because I think the acting and like the costing in this was really superb uh, because uh, Bonnie and Clyde are played by Warren Beatty and uh, Faye Dunaway. And one thing, I mean, one actor that really surprised me in this particular film was uh, Michael J. Pollard. He usually plays these really weirdo type of roles in general. But I thought it was so incredible, incredibly badass in this film, which I didn't expect him to be in that type of... Um, I didn't expect him to be like that in this particular role. Uh, because he's usually played, like like I said, goofball characters. Uh, but yeah, Bonnie and Clyde, I really enjoyed. And uh, yeah, I for those of you who know the story, you probably already know this by this point. So there's no need for me to tell you about it. So uh, yeah, anyway, Bonnie and Clyde from 1967 at number 7. And at number six, we have a uh, one of very few uh, musicals, you can say. I mean, I wouldn't even really even call it a music. It has numerous of songs in it, but uh, number six, we have The Wizard of Oz from 1939. And uh, this one is, I mean, like I said, I'm not too fond of musicals in general, but I wouldn't really say this is a musical. I mean, at least the songs have something to do with the storyline itself. I mean, it drives the storyline forward. Unless, I mean, some of the, those other musicals are just shoved in with a bunch of music just for the sake of having music there. While this one still feels like the the music has some sort of purpose or relevance to the story. Uh, so yeah, that's the reason why I enjoy this so much as well. So uh, yeah, The Wizard of Oz at number 6. Uh, and at number 5 we have Parasite from 2019. Uh, people have already talked to death about this film before. Uh, so there's no real need for me to talk about this one because when it was new everyone talked about it and I waited like one or two years before I finally sat down and watched it uh, just because I didn't want to watch it when all the hype was really up there really so uh, but I mean I will just say I can confirm the hype I, mean, I know that sounds really strange to say but I really appreciate this film and it just went in so many different dire uh, directions that I didn't expect and uh, yeah that's I mean when a film surprises me that's when you know they've succeeded when making their film. So yeah, Parasite, number five from 2019. And number four, we have a film by one of my favorite Japanese directors, uh, Takashi Miike. Um, the film is called Crow's Zero. It's sort of like these, um, about these different types of gangs <coughs> in, these, in these schools. And they have sort of like a ranking system. So they pretty much have to fight off uh, each other. Uh, and for some reason, I don't really understand why, why were there no teachers or any like principals trying to uh, solve this problem? I mean, that's just a big plot hole, which I don't care too much about, because when you sit down and watch a film like this by Takashi Miike, you don't really expect too much logic thrown into it, because I think the the overall uh, the overall point of the film is show really entertaining action sequences and fight choreography, which I thought was really great. Uh, so if you like Takashi Miike films in general, uh, go check this one out. So yeah, Crow's Zero from 2007. I can also recommend the sequel. It's not as good, in my opinion, but still a really good sequel. So yeah. And at number three, we have a film which is... Uh, oh, damn. This is... This is depressing. <laughs> uh, yeah, at number three, we have A Common Sea from 1985. Uh, the freaky thing about this one is I watched this, I think right at the very moment almost when the whole incident between Russia and Ukraine uh, happened last year, which was just really, I mean, I felt so incredible, incredibly uncomfortable while watching this. Uh, even so, maybe, maybe more so than I would would feel otherwise. So uh, this is not an uneasy film to watch, especially not now, right, right now at this point. So... Um, it's still a really great film. This is probably one of the best war films that I've ever seen. Uh, and that says a lot. So uh, yeah, come and see at number three from 1985. And at number two, we have a uh, sort of a classic, which I had not seen before. I'm glad I watched it now. And the film is called To Kill a Mockingbird from 1962 with uh, Gregory Peck, 
who is absolutely amazing. And I was really surprised by the child actors in this film as well, because usually, I think I mentioned this before in my previous videos, that sometimes when it comes to child actors, they turn out to be really, really bad or really, really good. In this case, I would say it's really, really good acting by all of the child actors, which really surprised me because it's always at least one or two child actors that just can't act. But uh, I can't say that about this particular film, so um, I'm not going to say too much about this. This is another one of those classic films, and I don't want to spoil too much about it, so I'm just going to leave it at that. So uh, yeah, at number two, we have uh, To Kill a Mockingbird from 1962. And at number one, what could possibly be my number one pick for... Uh, 2020, if, uh, not 2023, 2022, um, a film that I saw in the, thin, uh, in the cinemas or in theater, and uh, this one really blew me away. I did not expect that, actually. So uh, at number one, we have uh, Top Gun Maverick. Maverick. Uh, what's there to say? People have already, This is another one of those films. Everyone has already talked about this one, and uh, I felt so pr surprised and glad that this film turned out to be such an, an amazing film. And uh, I would also say this film really knew how to uh, pay homage to the original characters or the original movie. Uh, so if you compare this one to, let's say, the new Star Wars sequel trilogy, well, the Star Wars sequel trilogy just pisses on the original characters and the original storyline. This one, like, patronizes it, like the original uh, Top Gun film. So it's not really like it, it's, uh, it's destroying anything, it's just... Uh, shows the respect to the characters that deserve the respect. So, uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. And uh, this was amazing to watch in the cinemas. Uh, I just re felt really bad for people that did not get the chance to watch this in the cinemas. So, uh, but yeah, really great. Nothing else to say about this particular film because people have already talked to death about that. So, yeah. Anyway, that's my top 10 uh, best uh, films that I've watched during 2022 uh, with some honorable mentions. Uh, if you want to know more about these films, go check their IMDb pages out and see if you find something interesting. Uh, I'm going to try to make the uh, top 10 worst films right after this particular video. So keep your eyes open for that one as well. So yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.